Hello all, welcome to the Embedded and IoT Linux for Red Blue Teams course at Pentester Academy. My name is Vivek Ramachandran and I am the chief trainer at Pentester Academy and your instructor for this course. Now in this brief course introduction video, we will look at what you can expect to learn in this course. So what are we going to look at? Now, lately, we've all heard of, you know, embedded and IoT devices more and more. Now, IoT is actually just a subset of embedded devices. Uh, but of course, you know, IoT has ended up popularizing embedded devices lately. Now, in this course, we'll actually do a complete deep dive and understand embedded firmware, uh, starting from the very basics. So we will look at the boot process, you know, for a board SOC using its manuals, understand about multi-stage embedded bootloaders, uh, specifically U-Boot, which is the most popular open source bootloader for embedded devices. Uh, and then we look at, you know, the Linux kernel for embedded devices using the latest 4.15 branch. And then finally, also the root file system, we look at BusyBox, UC libc and all of that. Now, if the word U-Boot, BusyBox, etc. does not ring an immediate bell, do not worry, we will cover all of the basics in this course. So what is the whole idea? Well, a lot of times when you're actually doing an audit of an embedded firmware or system, uh, you can only really do well if you understand everything in and out. And this is really where in this course, we will configure, build and run a full blown embedded system uh, starting right from the bootloader U-Boot to the Linux kernel and finally all the way up to the root file system, user mode and kernel mode applications. Now, one of the key concerns of embedded software is of course, you know, someone breaking in, exploiting, misusing and backdooring. So we will look at how attackers or adversaries can backdoor user as well as kernel mode on embedded systems. Okay, so the big question, you know, why is this course even relevant to Red Blue Teams? Now, as I mentioned, uh, a lot of IoT devices and embedded devices are now making their way into the enterprise and into the industry. Now, this is really where you would be tasked with, if not already, to audit, pen test, and even try to secure many of these devices. Now, of course, many of you may have already done a little bit of hardware tinkering and, you know, found your 500th UART or JTAG port, uh, you know, gotten a root shell through the UART port. You may have run bin walk, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And you may have just moved on to the next firmware bin walk works with, right? So, so the key thing I'm trying to hit at is, uh, this course is about going beyond debug ports and, you know, dumping, extracting firmware. There's already a lot of documentation out there about it. Uh, but keep in mind that once you do have hardware access, finally, uh, you have to deal with the software. So, you know, hardware access finally is just a gateway to software, gateway to software, I'm sorry. So if you've gotten a root shell through a debug port, or if you manage to extract firmware, the big question is what next? And this is where this course will give you a very deep, solid technical understanding of embedded IoT firmware and what to expect and how you can, you know, go about understanding the software better and which will in turn allow you to kind of, you know, reverse and play and hack with it. Now, once you've understood the in and outs of how embedded firmwares are built, uh, this could, you know, kind of go ahead and make it extremely easy to identify possible places where an adversary can backdoor these devices and systems. And at the end of this course, you will be able to show you know, extremely convincing demonstrations, both internally within your company, as well as to clients, depending on, you know, what kind of business you work for, to showcase many of these attacks and vulnerabilities, both user as well as kernel mode backdoors will be covered. Okay, 
So if we were to dive a little bit more into detail and understand what is it that we plan to build in this course. So we are going to be taking, uh, you know, an embedded hardware, which will be extremely, which is extremely easily available. And I'll get to what it is. And then we'll start with first understanding and building both the first and second stage bootloaders. So this will consist of understanding the system on chip, or uh, basically, you know, the, the, the chip on the system, as well as the peripherals and all of that, multi-stage bootloaders. And from there, we look at building a custom U-boot for our board, where we will do a deep dive into U-boot, uh, the different command line options and, and how to go about investigating a system from a bootloader's perspective. From there, we'll jump into the Linux kernel and the device tree. So of course, you know, as soon as your first and second stage, stage bootloaders run, they are going to go ahead and bring up the kernel, pass it the device tree and arguments so that the kernel can run. Now in this course, we are going to look at board specific details just so you can get an understanding of how embedded kernels are built. And then we will go about building a custom kernel. We'll build a device tree, uh, you know, for our board in question. We will also understand how kernel mode rootkits can work on embedded systems with concrete examples where we will be providing you source code to compile and run. Finally, after the kernel boots, it has to bring up a file system. This is where we look at building a root file system, building busy box, uh, you know, UC libc, and then of course, some examples of user mode backdoors. Now, there are many terms here, which might not, as I said, ring a bell immediately, you might not have looked at this, do not worry. Uh, if you've used basic Linux, you have an understanding and interest uh, you know, for embedded systems and IoT devices, then this course will start right from the very basics. Okay, so of course, uh, the big question, the kernel mode rootkits and backdoors, which we talked about, we will look at examples where we will do syscall monitoring, we will spawn user mode backdoors from kernel mode code, uh, we'll create unkillable user space processes, we'll also look at how network stack filtering uh, can happen using net filter hooks, as well as go about building a very simple network backdoor in the kernel, uh, which can be used as a command and control. Now for all of this, we will be providing you the source code which we've created. And best of all, all of this will run, as I mentioned earlier, on the latest 415 kernel, right? This is not something where you, you have to revert back to a really old 2.4 kernel, uh, not at all. Everything we do will run on the 415 kernel. And of course, this is an embedded course. So we are going to pick up the most popular embedded architecture, which is ARM. So this uh, entire course is going to be based around the ARM architecture. Okay, finally, the hardware requirements. Now, when I was designing this course, my the idea was to get a piece of hardware which is readily available. But at the very same time, because I'd like to teach you everything right from the basics, I also wanted it to be very well documented. And this is really where the BeagleBone Black, uh, I think, really excels. Uh, BeagleBone Black is based on Texas Instruments AM335X series of uh, SOCs extremely well documented. TI has an unbelievable 6,000 page manual. I'm not kidding you on this. At the very same time, you know, the BeagleBone Black creators have worked closely, uh, you know, with the U-Boot creators and all of that. So this board is very well supported, uh, you know, by U-Boot in the Linux kernel. And it is extremely easy to go ahead and find the, all the right details to go ahead and do the groundwork. So that's the reason why the BeagleBone Black has been chosen. Uh, along with, of course, as I said, this is an extremely popular ARM reference board, which is used in the Yocto project, the Open Embedded project. And at the very same time, it has a wide OS coverage. Uh, the built-in OS is Debian, but you can also run Android, Ubuntu, 
and even your custom Linux, which is basically what we're going to create on the board. Uh, the price is, is reasonable, you know, $60. And as I said, you know, you're going to learn a whole lot. So along with the BeagleBone Black, you require two other pieces of hardware. One is a micro SD card. Anything greater than 8 GB would be perfect. And along with that, you require a serial TTL-232 cable. Uh, because we are going to be connecting to the serial port, UART port, and going ahead and you know debugging the device and loading stuff on the device. So this cable is required. Now, my recommendation is if you're based in the US, purchase this from Adafruit or any of the other good vendors. Do not purchase cheap knockoffs. Uh, the only reason I say that is, you know, a lot of cheap knockoffs which are there on Amazon might just be a few bucks. And again, this cable is probably $17, but you will find knockoffs for as low as, you know, four or five dollars. But many a times, you know, they drop the signal. There are a lot of problems which I've seen students face. So I'd recommend getting a good cable. So what about other CPU architectures? Well, after we finish off in the very end, I'll also look at MIPS based embedded systems and give you two examples of a Wi-Fi router and a network switch uh, where we will go ahead and you know work out some of the examples that we've done with the ARM based device BeagleBone Black. The software requirements, uh, we are going to be using Ubuntu 16.04, 64-bit, I would highly recommend to only use this platform because I've thoroughly tested all the different, uh, you know, tools, the custom code, the tool chain, everything on this. Uh, you can either natively run this if you have an Ubuntu installation, you know, on your device, or you can run this within a virtual machine. We will be running this in a VM for this class. And because a fair bit of compilation is involved, uh, we will require at least 50 gigs of hard disk space and 4 GB of RAM. Uh, for my demos, I'm actually going to go ahead and allocate my VM 100 gigs, 8 gigs of RAM. And, you know, I have a, a multi-core i7. So, you know, the more CPU you can throw at the VM, the better. Because compilation tasks, if you can run them parallelly uh, on a multi-core system, it's going to save you a lot of time. And of course, you are going to hear the fans spin a lot. Okay, so I'm all excited. And this is really what I have in mind for this course. And I'm hoping that if you finish this course, you would have understood the in and outs of embedded IoT firmware and operating systems. And after that, the next time you run Binwalk uh, and you see U-Boot and you know, the Linux firmware, SquashFS, blah, 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 uh, none of that will be a black box. You know, you will really be excited to rip that firmware apart even further and, uh, you know, analyze uh, it. Well, that's it. Uh, see you in the next video. I hope you're excited as much as I am about this course and tweet uh, to us on Twitter. We are SecurityTube if you have any interesting thoughts. Thank you.